if you had to describe Christianity to someone who was totally unaware of what Christianity is and also totally neutral, what would you say? Think about that for a second. If you had to describe Christianity, what is Christianity to someone who has no idea and also just totally neutral about it, like not opposing, what would you say? What would you emphasize about Christianity? What, what is it? What is Christianity? Okay, you kind of have it in your mind what you would say. Okay, now you can't use the word church. What is Christianity? What would you emphasize about Christianity if you couldn't even use the word church? Here's a hint. We're starting a new message series today called Encounter. Encounter. It's when you meet someone and you are impacted and you are with someone. And we are uh, starting today, we're going to be talking about Encounter with God. Now, I don't know if that's a new concept to you, but God is real. He is a person. He is available. And he longs to have an encounter with you. In fact, when all this got started and God created humans, he, was in cre- he created them for an encounter with him. Yeah. He created us to be with him. So over these next several weeks in this series, what we want to look at is how to get yourself in a position to have an encounter with the living God. This is awesome. I am so excited. We've been, we've been planning on this for a while, so we're, we're super stoked that it's finally here. We're, we're going to talk about some things you can do. We're going to talk about some practices that will help to get you in position, in the place, in the state, to have an encounter with God. In Matthew chapter 11, at the end of the chapter, Jesus speaks some, some very amazing words to us. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. This is what he said. Come to me. Wait a minute. Did he, oh, I think he meant to say come to church. <laughs> Interesting. He said come to me. You know what that means? Move toward Jesus. It's a command. It's an invitation. It's an expectation. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. Move this way. Now notice, Jesus is God who moved our way first. So he, he was here. He's like, I came all the way to you. Now I'm saying to you, come to me. Move toward me, Jesus says. All of you who are weary... And carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. So Jesus is talking about an unfair trade association. Isn't that interesting? So he's saying, you bring me your burdens. You bring me your heaviness. You bring me what you're carrying that is weighing you down and making you sluggish and and tripping you up. You bring me that, and I'll take that, and I'll give you rest. What a trade. What a trade. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. You know what a yoke is? That wooden thing that you see in uh, more rural uh, countries and more rural settings where two oxen can be kind of yoked together with wood. It, It is a device that makes them work as a team. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. And I don't know what you picture that Jesus is like or that God is like, 
Perhaps you assume he's distant. Perhaps you assume he's mean. Perhaps you assume like he has four million rules and if you don't obey some of them, he's going to smack you down. If that's how you picture him, you're missing something here. And Jesus says, I want you to know what I'm like. I'm asking you to come. I'm actually telling you to come. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. What's he going to teach you? How to have an amazing life a rich and satisfying life. Jesus says, come to me, let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart. He, if he weren't, then he wouldn't be saying, come to me. He wouldn't be saying, let me teach you. I know it's going to be a process. I know you're going to stumble. I know you're going to get it wrong sometimes. That's okay. Let me teach you. If he was arrogant and mean, that would not be his tone. But he says instead, I'm humble and gentle, so it's okay. Come here. Come to me. Yoke up with me. Let me teach you, and you will find rest for your souls. Not even just rest for your head, but rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. So many times we are carrying heavy burdens. We're carrying things that weigh us down. And in some cases, we're saying, it's because you gave me this burden, Lord. You weighed me down. You made life hard for me. You made all my choices more difficult than I suspect. You have not taken up Jesus' yoke. Because Jesus' yoke is easy. And his burden is light. If your burden is perfection, perhaps that's not Jesus' burden that you are carrying if your burden is trying to measure up to Jesus so that he will finally approve of you and, and love you and take care of you and answer your prayers, that's probably not Jesus' yoke or burden that you are carrying. That's a burden that you made or a burden someone else put on you or a burden the enemy put on you. It's not Jesus' burden. He said, the burden I give you is light. I'm telling you what, that is good news today. And Jesus is describing in this passage a lifestyle of encountering him. Earlier we sang, we need a move of God. And we have been praying this specific prayer. I'm so glad we sang that song today. We've been praying for a long time, Lord, we need a move. We need a fresh move of you. That means that you are moving here, that you are working in us, that you are encouraging us, that you are in us, that you are speaking to us. That is a move of God. We need a move. And a lot of times when we pray that or we sing that or we think that, what we're sort of picturing is an exceptional thing. Like maybe if I can just get to church, there'll be a move there and I can somehow last the rest of the week without a move. But Jesus, that's not what Jesus is inviting us to. He is inviting you to a lifestyle of encounter, encountering God for yourself, knowing God, hearing from God, being with God, doing God's work, teaming up with God, learning with God. That's what he's inviting you to. It is a 24-7 lifestyle. It is beautiful. It is powerful. It is peaceful. It is glorious. It is positive. And even when your life stinks, Jesus said, even in the darkest valley, I will not be afraid because you are close beside me. You're protecting and comforting me. Even when it stinks, and life does sometimes stink, sometimes for years it stinks. Even then, Jesus is with you. And he wants to carry your burden. He's asking you right now. I could just stop right now. He has asked someone, he's asking someone right now to give him your burden. Yeah. Right now. And so, Lord, I'm, I wasn't planning to do this, but Lord, right now, we just pray right now. Lord, we accept your invitation. We say, yes, Lord, yes. We've heard you say to come and give you our burdens and our weights. Lord, we've come right now. We lift those burdens off our shoulders and we put it in your hands. And Lord, we just say, take it, take this burden, take this weight, take this thing that I just cannot carry, take this thing that makes me miserable, take this thing that defines my life instead of you defining my life, take it, Jesus, take it, take it from us, Lord, and give us rest, 
Give us rest for our souls. Rest all the way deep inside. Rest where the struggle is. Rest where the striving is right now. I just speak rest over you. I speak rest in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Rest for your souls. Wow. What would that be like in the most stressed out time in the history of humanity? What would it be like to have rest for your souls? Well, I, I, I want to just give a few reminders for you to take during the week for you to press in and find rest for your souls under your chair in the front, towards the front, on the bottom, there's a post-it note on three chairs. If you've got a post-it note, would you hold it up so I can see it? And I've got something for you. It's right under the front, right under the front bottom of the chair, just right behind the fabric. If you found one, hold it up. All right, come on up, Hope. Good. Now, there should be a couple more. So there's one. I have a little travel pillow for you. Yeah? Did you, the other one find them? Anybody else find one? Uh, Tina, I just feel like I want to give you one. It's for you. You're welcome. And there's one more. So it uh, must be in a seat that's not filled. Okay, so who has a September birthday? Is it September? Oh, it's October. Who has an October birthday? <laughs> okay, so if you have an October birthday, why don't you stand? Okay, and let's see whose is the closest to today. Today's the second. Oh, my goodness. Anyone closer than yesterday? All right, here you go. That's awesome. It's just a pillow which reminds us of rest, which reminds us that Jesus has rest for your soul. All right? So it's just a tangible reminder for you. What could your life be like if you had a daily encounter with Jesus? Now, some of you may have daily prayer, it might go something like this. Thank you, Lord, for this food. In Jesus' name, amen. That's cool. That's a daily prayer. I don't know if we've got to encounter yet. <laughs> what would life be like if you had a daily encounter with Jesus? For some time now, I just felt the, led by the Lord to give him the first part of my day. And I, I've always tried to give him my morning somewhere. Sometimes it's after I've stressed for hours and I give him my morning at 11. <laughs> but I have been experimenting with giving him the first part of my morning. Very, uh, first thing I do. First thing. And it's really interesting what, is, what, has, been, what has taken place. Sometimes I feel the Holy Spirit so closely. I just feel his presence. Many times I feel almost nothing. But one time recently, my mind could not get out of a negative cycle. It was oppressive. I was beating myself up. I was complaining in my mind, and my heart physically felt heavy, heaviness on my chest, like I just felt so down, so low, so sad. And this went on for like a day and a half, and in that morning, I just came to the Lord. I put on some worship music, and I, I sat in my Holy Spirit chair. I have a Holy Spirit chair at home, which is where I, I really love to meet with the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to, you know what? 
I don't want to say I'm all glorious and just feeling God every time. I'm not. Many days I feel nothing. But nonetheless, I sit there 60 minutes, 90 minutes sometimes with the Lord. And I am saying, Lord, I am here to be with you. On this particular day, I, I could not get out of this cycle of negativity. I was so sad, deeply sad. And so I just said, okay, Lord, it's you and me. I'm just going to focus on you the best I can. And so I started praising the Lord. I started singing that worship song out loud. I started reading the Bible chapter out loud. I journaled, which is where you just take a verse, write it down, write down observations prayerfully, write down application, write down a prayer. I like, I'm focusing on you, Lord. I'm worshiping you. I'm focusing on your word. When I went to get in the shower, I uh, turned on music and kind of tried to memorize a song. And... Um, uh, the, the song just, the tune of it just went right out of my head. I can only think of the songs we sang today, but um, I just started singing a song. And so th during the whole shower, I don't know about you, the shower for me can be one of my most intense thinking places. And I was in this negative spiral and I just said, I'm not doing it. That's not what, that's what, not what this is going to be. I'm going to focus on you, Lord. So for my whole time in the shower, I'm just singing the chorus that I could remember of that song over and over and over and over. Lord, make me your sanctuary. Make me your sanctuary, my father. That's the song. Make, make me your sanctuary. Make me your sanctuary. And come, come here. Come be with me, Lord. I want to just be so filled up with you. Filled up with wonder. Up with favor. Up with more of you. Up with glory. Up with power. Up with more of you. I just want you. And it lifted. Did I feel a big uh, tingles? No. But I had an encounter with God that changed my life. What could your life be like if you had a daily encounter with Jesus? I'll tell you what it could be like. You could interrupt negative cycles just by being in his presence. He, he would interrupt them by you being in his presence. You could find a rest for your soul. Your shoulders could relax down instead of being hunched like this. Mine are most of the time. Shoulders could go down. You could be used by Jesus to minister to somebody at the bus stop, at your desk at work, at the store. You could react differently when annoyed because you've had a daily encounter with Jesus. You could love your spouse more, or just period. You could love your kids, you could love your parents, you could love your grandparents, you could love your family, you could love that person that annoys you like crazy. You could bring a word of encouragement to someone out of the overflow of your life because you have been with Jesus. That's what could happen. You could speak a word of prophecy to someone. You could walk in peace where normally you don't. You could have joy for no reason other than Jesus. That's what could happen to you if you had a daily encounter with the Lord. Yes. And Jesus is inviting you to that encounter. The Apostle Paul is one of the early leaders of the church and he, he wrote something pretty jarring in Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. He has just been writing about how he's better than everybody else. And he's had all the advantages. He knows more about religion than everybody else. And in verse 8, he says, yes, everything else is worthless. All my religion, all my religiosity, all my rules keeping is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. All the stuff that he had bragging rights over is worthless 
compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, rubbish, transfer station smell, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. He said, I no longer count on my own righteousness, my own rules-keeping, my own practices. I don't count on those through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ, for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Now listen to this next statement. Paul writes, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead, I want to suffer with him. Is that a typo? I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Paul is trying to describe something that's so powerful, and yet it's so easy for us to gloss over it and go, oh, wow, that's cool. He's an apostle, whatever. He's so great. And he's saying, listen, Knowing Christ Jesus is so far beyond anything else. That's all I want. He said, I would rather die if it means I could be resurrected, resurrected with Christ. I would rather share in his suffering if it means that I could also share in his resurrection from the dead. Have you counted everything else but it's worthless? Everything else but knowing Jesus is worthless as garbage? compared to knowing or gaining Jesus for yourself? Are you willing to suffer for Jesus if that is his call? Recognizing that it's worth it to experience resurrection? Have you experienced the mighty resurrecting power of God in your life? Are you a follower of Jesus? That word when he said in in verse uh, 10, I want to know Christ, it is an experiential knowing. It is a knowing that comes from encounter, daily encounter. That's how you get to know Christ Jesus. Paul also wrote in Romans 12, I plead with you. I plead with you. Give your bodies. And this word is not flesh. This word is yourself. Give your whole self to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him by giving yourself to God. Don't copy the behavior and customs, the practices of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think through through encounter with Jesus, through that, the kind of practices that bring you into his presence, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Yeah. So the practices, and today we're, we're going to talk about a practice, and then the next few weeks talk about a practice, but the practices are not the goal. A notch in your belt is not the goal. A check mark in your journal is not, that's not the goal. The goal is to be the kind of person that encounters Jesus. Amen. That's the goal. And if some of these practices can help get you there, hallelujah, let's do it. Let's do every one of them because it's, it's so valuable to know Jesus and be transformed in him. Yeah. The practice I want to talk about today, uh, besides uh, just where I went off my notes, talking about just being with Jesus, that's a practice. That's a practice. Uh, and that can apply to all of us. But I want to talk about baptism in water today. So if you went through the class last Sunday, there were six people who went through the class, but some of them were not able to be here today. So we'll catch them next time. But if you, if you went through the class last week, would you go right now and meet Joseph, the one who taught the class? All right? So head, head right out to him, and uh, you, you'll, you'll meet him out here in this hallway. All right? So first of all, before I even go any further, have you put your faith in Jesus to save you? Many of you are ready. Yes, I love it. I'd be kind of cool just to find out if there are any others. Have you put your faith in Jesus to save you? Yeah, okay, cool. There are several in this room. That is awesome. 
in Acts chapter 2, 38, it's written down what Peter said. The whole crowd gathered on this feast day, and they said, what must we do to be saved? And, and Peter said, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You must turn from your sins, turn your life over to God, and let him lead. This is where I got that, that I say every single week. This is from the Bible. So have you done that? Turn away from your sins, turn your life, acknowledge that you're a sinner, turn away from your sins, turn, turn your life over, say, Jesus, I give you my life. I want you to come and lead my life. If you have put your faith in Jesus, then there is something that God requires. Baptism. Somewhere along the road, we kind of got this feeling that it's optional. It is not optional. It's something that you're asked to do. Now, if you get saved, if you put your faith in Jesus, you know, right before you die, and then there's no opportunity, this is not going to keep you from heaven. But if you're here, you have to do this. If you put your faith in Jesus, it is required. Jesus went to John the Baptist, who was baptizing people in the Jordan River, and John is like, you don't need it. You're the Lord. You, I don't need to baptize you. And he said, Jesus, this is what he said. Oh, no, no. We must do all that God requires. That's what Jesus says about baptism. That's pretty intense. If you have put your faith in Jesus, it's something that God requires. Now, this is not a substitute. That's not enough. <laughs> Some took the class last week, but I want to invite all of you to be baptized if you have put your faith in Jesus and never been baptized. So if you have put your faith in Jesus, but you've never been baptized in water by immersion, dunked all the way down, that is the symbolism not just sprinkling. I'm inviting you today to be baptized, even if you didn't take the class. So if you were merely sprinkled as an infant, if you wandered away from Jesus at some point and you have come back to him and you're following Jesus now, uh, uh, or if you need a fresh start in your relationship with, with Jesus, here's how we've prepared for you today. We have shorts in every size, we have women's garments. We have men's garments. We have T-shirts. We, we have what you need if you did not bring it. We have towels. We have combs that have never been used, just came out of the package. We have brushes. We, we have what you need to be baptized today. So in just a few minutes, would you just right now just begin to think about it? If you've never been, if you've put your faith in Jesus, but you've never been baptized, today's your day. We're not always this prepared. Like, we are prepared for spontaneous baptisms today. Like, we're, we're ready. We got, we got the whole enchilada ready for you. In, and and if, you, if you decide, maybe your heart's beating right now fast, and God, you think God might be calling you to be baptized today, I'll, I'll let you know when to go in just a few minutes. Colossians 2.12 in the Bible says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life, because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead, buried with Christ, raised to new life. That is so awesome. In Romans chapter 6, uh, verses 3 to 8, right in there, it says, uh, Have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, so Jesus was baptized, when we were joined with him in baptized, when we're baptized, we joined him in his death symbolically. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. We left our old self under the water. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. We know that our old sinful lives were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Did you hear what it's about? So that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were also set free from the power of sin. And since we died, our old self was died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. What could happen if you are baptized in water? 
Well, for one thing, you would have a stake in the ground. You would have a moment to point to when everything became new. Maybe you're fuzzy on when you put your faith on, in Jesus. Maybe it was kind of a gradual thing. Here's a point in time. It happened on this day. You would have a picture, a, a, an experiential picture of what it means to leave your sins under those wa uh, the waters. Jesus' blood is, and faith in him, is that's what forgives your sins. But this is a symbol, a picture, an illustration of it. But not only that, this is an encounter with Jesus. This very thing. It is such a powerful thing. It is so much more than just getting wet, just getting submerged or immersed. This is an encounter with Jesus. You are joining with him in his death and his resurrection. This being baptized is an encounter with Jesus, and it is part of an encounter lifestyle. Wow. That's what we're offering you today. Would you stand to your feet, everybody? I want to just pray with everybody first. Just stand to your feet. Online, make where you are a place of prayer. Let's pray. And let's pray right now. Lord Jesus, we want to know you. You invited us to come toward you, to come to you, to learn from you, to yoke up with you. And you promised that you would give us rest. Rest for our souls. Rest for who we are. Rest in our identity in Jesus Christ. Rest. You promise us rest. And so today, Lord, we bring our whole selves to you. And we offer our whole selves to you as a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable way to worship you. We bring our whole selves to you, Lord. And, and Jesus, we just say, would you just begin to encounter us? Lord, we're going to take steps. We're going to do practices. We're going to do things. But Lord, we ask you for you. The goal is not getting wet. The goal is not reading the Bible. The goal is not praying. The goal is being with you. Lord, we want to be with you, and I pray that you would take us as a congregation deeper into you right now in this season, in this encounter season. Lord, I pray that we would encounter you, every single one of us. Lord, for the person right now that is thinking, I can't encounter Jesus because I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this or that. Lord, I pray that you would reveal that as a lie from the enemy. That is a deception, and we do not accept it right now in Jesus' name because the path to you has been paid by you. You have made a way for us to be in your presence, and you include all of us. The invitation to come to you is for all of us. And so right now, Jesus, we come. We come. We come to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, with your head still bowed, I'd love to just give you an invitation to put your faith in Jesus, to turn from your sins, turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. If today you want to come back to Jesus, you're repenting, you're turning away from your sins, you're, you're turning away from those things that separate you from God, and you're turning to God, and you want to become a Christian today, would you raise your hand and I'll just pray for you. Would you raise your hand online as well? I can't see you back, but God can see you right where you are. Is there anybody else? Yep, yep, I see some hands going up here, and I'm super pumped about that. Super proud of you guys for raising your hand. That is awesome. So I'd love to just coach you all in a prayer. Would you all just repeat after me, but say it to God? Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new I give you my life I choose to follow you be my leader I'll be your apprentice in Jesus name amen amen praise God I'm so glad that you did that now with everybody still standing um, let me let me just mention this a couple things if you just now there were there were uh, two or three of you who just now raised your hand to say yes I'm putting my faith in Jesus today uh, I, I want to ask you to, to meet Pastor Christian could you turn around and just wave at them so they see who I mean would you meet Pastor Christian today do not leave this building until you meet him at the following Jesus table after the service and he is just going to give you some free stuff to help you to, to grow in your faith all right to move forward so make sure you do that it's on you it's your responsibility. You meet Pastor Christian. He is there, ready to meet you. 
Okay. Now, for the rest of you, hearts are pounding. If you have put your faith in Jesus and you've not been baptized, we are ready. And if you just raise your hand for salvation, you're ready. That's all, that's all the requirement. Put your faith in Jesus, all right? Kaylin, one of our board members, is in the back. She is waving her hand. Head out right now, super fast. And she's going to give you, you can go choose some clothes. She's going to show you where the bathrooms are. You can go to a stall and change. If, 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 it, if you need to do it, do it. Because this is something God requires. And this is an encounter with Jesus. I'm so pumped to see some people going, and many of the rest of you have already been baptized. I get it. That's great. All right. If you need to go, you got to you gotta hustle. You got to hustle because we're going to run out of time soon. All right. It is time to baptize. So uh, Pastor Tori is coming first, and she's going to be baptizing some kids. And, and oh, you got the mic. Awesome. And I am so excited about this. Is this your first time to baptize? It's so great. I love it. We are pumped. You could go ahead and sit. Sorry about that. I forgot about that. And if you are a family member or a friend, you just get right up and get the best spot. Come sit in the front row. Take your pictures. Pictures are welcomed. There you go. (laughs) Well, Jackson, I am so excited that today is your baptism day. The first day I met Jackson was our old building. We're in COVID and we're in main service, big service. And he decided to give his heart to God. And that was my first time meeting Jackson. So (laughs) I'm going to cry. It makes me so, so excited for you, Jackson, that you've now made this decision. So Jackson, why have you decided to get baptized today? Because I want to learn more about God. So, so good, Jackson. So good. And who was instrumental in helping you come to Jesus? My friend. Your friend? What was your friend's name? Lucas. Awesome. That is so cool that your friend helped you get here. And are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. All right, Jackson, I'm going to pray over you, okay? Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for Jackson. I thank you, Lord, for the things that you've already done in his life, Lord. We see in Kids Church how he is just a leader. He is on fire for you, God. His worship to you is so genuine, Lord. And I pray that you would continue to use him all the days of his life, Lord, as he is committed to follow you all of the days of his life, God. So I pray, Lord, that you would continue to build him up as a leader for the next generation of the church, God, for the generation now even, that he'd lead his family members who don't know you, God. He'd lead his other friends who don't know you, Lord. He'd be another Lucas for someone else, God, just like Lucas led him to you, God. I pray that you would use him, Lord. I pray that he would be a leader, Lord, that he would walk in faith, Lord, with confidence, without fear, and Lord, that he would just be a change in our world, God. And we just just thank you, Lord, for all the things that you've done and all the amazing things that you're going to do through Jackson. We praise you and we worship you. And I pray, Lord, that as he, is, as he is baptized today, God, that he would just remember the good things that you have done for him, Lord, that you died on the cross to, sep- to save him from his sins, God. And nothing else can do that, Lord. The water can't do that today. Only you can, Lord. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. All right, Jackson, I'm going to have you take your hand. Don't, don't breathe, breathe, it's okay. <laughs> now upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take a big breath, ready? Race to new life.
Okay, Hope, you ready? Yeah? Why have you decided to get baptized today? Um, because I want to show God that I want to follow him for my whole life. That's so good. And who was instrumental in bringing you to Jesus? My parents. parents that's Jason and Nadine, right? Can we smile at them, wave at the camera. Hi. Awesome. And are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to pray over you, okay? And if everyone could just bow your heads and just pray with me over hope. Let's do that together as a church. Dear Lord, we come to you, Lord, and we just lift up hope, God. We worship you, God, that you have led her to make this decision today to be baptized, Lord. We thank you for that, God. We pray that you continue to work in hope's life, Lord, that she would just be a shining light and hope for people, just as her name says, God, that she would bring the hope of Jesus to others, Lord. And so we thank you, God, that you have blessed her with that name, Hope, not just because it's a beautiful name, Lord, but because there is purpose in her life to bring hope through the message of Jesus, Lord. So we just pray that over her, God, that she would be a bringer of the message of the gospel to people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have just blessed Hope, Lord, with so much love in her life and so much just joy, God. And I pray that you continue to pour that upon her, Lord. I pray that as she's baptized today, God, that she would just fall more and more in love with you, God, that as the water falls off of her, God, so does all the things, Lord, that aren't, that aren't from you, God. I pray for just joy to rest upon her. I pray for confidence to rest upon her, Lord, for peace. And Lord, I pray that you would use her in her schools, use her with her friends, Lord, to just be a light and a hope to others in Jesus' name. All right, hope, go ahead and have your hand. What hope is that called? Upon your confession of faith, in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Jesus, raised to new life. How's it going? Are you cold? It's very warm, isn't it? It was warm this morning. <laughs> Julia, why do you want to be baptized today? Because <laughs> uh, like what you were talking about in the baptism classes is me making a de decision of faith that no one else can make for me. That's great. Is, uh, was, was anyone instrumental in helping you to follow Jesus? Yeah, my mom. Hi, mom. And uh, Lacey, she's not here today, but hi, Lacey. <laughs> oh, man. Are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Amen. Well, I just want to pray for you, Julia. Ju Jesus, I lift up Julia to you. I'm so grateful for her. She's been such a blessing to me and such a blessing to our church. But, Lord, I pray that you would be a blessing to her, that you would continue to bless her, bless her heart and bless her family. I pray that you would fill her with your Holy Spirit to overflowing Jesus. And I pray that you would give her new gifts. And I, Lord, I pray that you would make her and continue to build her as a leader, Jesus. I pray that you would continue to guide her every step that this life takes. I pray that you would give her wisdom and gentleness and just a spirit of kindness, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would give her just courage to proclaim your gospel to those around her, to her friends and to her enemies, Jesus. Lord, if anyone is uniquely gifted to stand up for the gospel, in your name, it's Julia. And so, Lord, I just pray that your hand would be over her life, all the days of her life. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, finger over your nose. I can't remember which one. And then, <laughs> that one. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so, Julia, based on your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ, <laughs> raised to new life. <laughs> I'm 
not going to make it. <laughs> okay, yeah, scoot forward a little bit. Okay. Why are you being water baptized today? I want to glow closer to Jesus. And then was there anyone who was instrumental in you making the decision to follow Jesus? Um, my family. It's fine. Stepmom and my dad. And are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Of course. Good answer. <laughs> oh, let me pray for you, Justin. Lord, I give you thanks for Justin. I thank you for his spirit. He is such a he's such a kind spirit, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would build in him just a strength, an inner strength, and a courage, Lord, to proclaim your gospel and to share it with his friends and with his family and with all the people around the world, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would give him the gift of mercy in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you will walk with him all the days of, all the days of his life. Guide him and show him where to go. Show him who to love and how to love extravagantly as you have. Lord, you bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so that hand over here. Yep, and that one over there. So. There you go. Grip it real tight, okay? So, based on your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ. Raised to new life. <laughs> Why do you want to be water baptized today? Follow God's will for my life. That's good. Was there anyone who was instrumental in helping you follow Jesus? My family. Anyone specific in your family? Uh, probably my aunt. That's so good. And are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? I am. Amen. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I pray a blessing over Allie, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would overwhelm her with your spirit. I pray that you would fill her and flood her to overflow, that you would empower her, Jesus. Lord, you have so richly blessed her and her family, and I pray that you would continue to richly bless them. I pray that you will give them a strength, her and her husband, a strength and an endurance to follow you and to raise their kids in your name, Jesus. Lord, I pray for every single one of their kids that they, their spirit would mirror the spirit of their mom and the spirit of their dad, Jesus, and that they would seek after you as they follow her. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, So based on your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Raised to new life. Sarah, why did you decide to get baptized today? Um, to renew my my faith and, and relationship with God. That's so good to follow God, right? To renew that. That is so awesome. Who was a big part of bringing you to, to follow Jesus? Uh, that would be my parents, Brad and Barbara Sears, since literally I was at the hospital as a baby. <laughs> yes, yes. And are you going to follow Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Sarah, Sarah I'm just going to pray over you, okay? And everyone, again, if we could just bow our heads and pray over Sarah together. Lord, 
I know that you see Sarah, God, and you are overjoyed in heaven right now, seeing Sarah come back to you, Lord. You've been waiting, God, and you knew she was coming, Lord, and today's the day that we can celebrate, God, that she is renewing her faith in you, her trust in you, Lord, and you are so worthy of that faith and trust, God, so we thank you for that, Lord. I pray over Sarah, God, that she would, she would hold fast to this faith, God, that that there wouldn't be any stumbling blocks in her path, Lord, but that she would be so firmly planted and rooted in you, Lord, that she wouldn't waver even with the biggest storm, God, that nothing could shake her faith, Lord. I pray that you would empower her, Lord, God, with your Holy Spirit, that even now her, your Holy Spirit would just flood her, God, that you would give her your joy and your peace and your love would just pour out upon her, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought her, God, to making this decision, Lord. And we pray that you would just continue to walk every step with her from here on out, God. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your faithfulness over Sarah, God, in Jesus' name. All right, Sarah. On your confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ, raised to new life. Excellent. You guys, this exceeded my expectations. God is doing something today. We've had some Jesus encounters in this baptism tank today. Praise God. Would you stand to your feet? Let's give God praise. And let's just sing. Let's sing together. Let's worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. When your blood you bought my freedom, hallelujah for the cross, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I was a prisoner, now I'm not, with your blood you Bought my freedom, hallelujah, for the cross, hallelujah, for the cross. Phew, I don't know about you, but I had tears, I was excited, I was pumped. I just love to see God doing stuff in our lives. Amen? Amen? Wow, what a day to celebrate the Lord and lives that are being changed. Praise God. Well, we're just beginning our series on encountering God, and I know God's got some great things for us. So let's all be here next week ready to hear what more the Lord wants to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, uh, we want to remind you, if you did make a uh, decision to follow Jesus, to head on out and see Pastor Christian at the Following Jesus uh, little table there and grab one of those bags. And we will see you next week. If you did do a Connect card, just leave it on your seat and the ushers will come and collect those. God bless. Have a great week.